In this video, we're going to take a look at the second NoSQL injection lab on Port Swigger's Web Security Academy. The lab is called Exploiting NoSQL Operator Injection to Bypass Authentication. But first, I realized that we missed some information at the end of the first video, so we did the Detecting NoSQL Injection Lab, and there was some background information afterwards, which was specific to that lab and not the second one. So let me just run through this. It says that you could also add a null character after the category value. MongoDB may ignore all characters after a null character, and this means that additional conditions in the MongoDB query are ignored. For example, the query may have an additional this.release restriction. So here you can see it's checking if this.category equals fizzy and if the product is released. But if we were to inject a null character after fizzy, it would mean that the second condition in that statement wouldn't be checked. So it would be the same of saying this release equals zero or one or anything. And that will result in the following NoSQL query. You can see there it ignores all the characters after null character. It removes the requirement for the release field to be set to one. And as a result, all of the products in the fizzy category are displayed, including the unreleased products. All right, and as usual, we're gonna go through the background information that's specific to this lab. But if you've already done that in your own time or you don't care, just feel free to skip the video chapter. NoSQL databases often use query operators, which provide ways to specify conditions that data must meet to be included in a query result. Examples of MongoDB operators include where, which will match documents that satisfy a JavaScript expression, NE, which will match all values that are not equal to a specified value, IN, which will match all values specified in an array, and regex, which selects documents where values matched based on a specific regular expression. You may be able to inject query operators to manipulate NoSQL queries, and to do this, we systematically submit different operators into a range of user inputs and then review the responses for error messages or other changes. In JSON messages, you can insert query operators as nested objects. For example, the username wiener can become username, and then we insert a JSON object inside that, which has the not equals operator. And in this case, we are looking for any usernames that don't equal invalid. For URL-based inputs, you can insert the query operators via URL parameters. So for example, you might change username equals wiener to username, and then in brackets, we have the not equals operator. And that's just gonna do the same thing as we saw with the JSON version. If that doesn't work, you can also try to convert the request method from get to post, change the content type to application slash JSON, and add the relevant JSON to the message body and inject these operators. So there is an extension called content type converter, which will automatically swap between JSON and XML. So you can use that to change that. So how do we detect operator injection in MongoDB? Consider a vulnerable application that accepts a username and a password in the body of a post request like we have here. We can test each input with a range of operators. So for example, to test whether the username input processes a query operator, we could use the following injection. So we put in that nested object in the username field, which is checking if it does not equal invalid. And if we want to test that on both the username and the password operator, we could do that again, as you can see in the example below, where we check if the username is not equal to invalid and the password is not equal to invalid, it should let us through. So this query will return all of the login credentials where both the username and the password are not equal to invalid. And as a result, you're logged into the application as the first user that's returned in the collection. To target an account, we can construct a payload that has a known username or a username that we've guessed. So in this example, we are actually trying multiple variations of the administrator user. And then for the password, we will just try and, oh, I can't actually see what they're trying there. Yeah, so if it's not equal to nothing, then the password should go through. Okay, so the background information was nice and short this time. Let's take a look at the lab. The description says, this login functionality for this lab is powered by a MongoDB NoSQL database. It is vulnerable to NoSQL injection using MongoDB operators. To solve the lab, we need to log into the administrator account, and we have been given some default credentials that we can use to log in to begin with. So let me open up the lab. And I'm gonna start by just logging into the account we were given. So let's just see what a standard login request looks like. And I'll go to Burp Suite. Let me resize this a little bit and we will see our post login request and I'm going to send this to the repeater so you can do control and R and then control shift and R if you want to jump straight to the repeater. We can also hide any uninteresting headers here so we've got a little bit more space and here we go. Let's just see what it looked like again. We click send, it goes to 302 found and it redirects. What if we changed it so it was an incorrect password? This time we see it's a 200 okay. So now we know what we're looking for, a successful login 
is a 302 and a failed login is a 200. So let's try and accomplish our goal. Let's go back and see what the first thing we wanted to do here. Let me say that if the password is not equal to invalid, it will log us in. Let's do that. So I'm going to change. We're going to do the nested object here. So I'm just going to paste this in here and I'm going to change this to the administrator user. We'll click on send and we get 200 OK. So that probably wasn't a good idea in changing the username first. Why don't we first see if this works on the account that we know the username for, which is Wiener. So I'll do that again. And you see that's the 302 found. So even though whatever we put in here is not going to matter, we're still going to get that successful login because of the NE. Okay, so it was the username that was a problem then. So we could go back and maybe we could just try and do this in option. I'll replace the username with that. And then it's going to try if there's any usernames, admin, administrator, or super admin, it'll log us in with those. But it doesn't. It gives us a 200 again. So what else can we try? Let's see what operators we had. And we've done the in. What about regex? So we know that the administrator user is probably going to have the word admin in the username somewhere. What if we just go back here and I'll change this? Let's not do an array. And let's change this from in to regex. And uh, what's the regex? Well, I'm just looking for admin. So anything that contains admin should be good. And there we go. We click on submit and it actually it's redirected to admin FKPC. So that's why it didn't find it because the username has this random string at the end. Now, maybe I would take this cookie and I'll just go here and see if I can update the cookie, the session cookie, and then refresh the page. I think I need to get rid of the wiener bit. Yep, there we go. That's it. We're logged in as the admin user. Another option, we could have just intercepted the login request and modified that. Sometimes you have some problems swapping the cookies around, but it didn't seem to have any issues this time. All right, so that's how we can exploit NoSQL operator injection to bypass authentication. Let me just go back and just see, did I miss anything from the background information? This time it doesn't look like it. So next time we've got a new heading, it's going to jump straight on to the next section and we'll look at the Exploit in NoSQL injection to extract data. Anyway, that is going to wrap it up for this video, a nice quick one. Let me just remind you, if you want to find some NoSQL injection vulnerabilities and get paid for it, you can check out the Integrity platform. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.